So let's talk about this week's Raw. And I have to say that even though, as I will always do, I will find things to nitpick about or I will find little details to kind of go on a little tangent about, I didn't have a lot of overall complaints about this week's show. Like even some of the stuff I said in kind of a cynical sense didn't mean that I still didn't enjoy the show. It was actually one of these rare times where there were enough things that were interesting during the course of the three hours that I was generally interested the whole night. And I think part of that was because we really were deep diving in where it was important and not focusing on crap that really wasn't important all except one segment where we decided to give somebody a live microphone for God knows what reason. But I actually enjoyed the show. Now, the kickoff match with John Cena and Jason Jordan, while I understand trying to tie this whole thing into Kurt Angle was John Cena's first match on SmackDown 15 years ago. Now everything's come full circle. It just didn't feel the same. It felt like this was just a random ass match thrown together to serve as yet another John Cena showcase piece because that's exactly the last thing we fucking need. And some people I'm sure will talk about, you know, Jason Jordan had a good showing here and he did. Talk about how this match was decent and for an opener of a Raw, especially in that context, it really was. I know some people will talk about it was nice for Raw to start off with something that wasn't a promo segment. And, and perhaps that's true, but just because it's something different doesn't automatically make it good. Um, what is good, though, is what happened with John Cena and Roman Reigns in the promo after this Cena-Jordan match. Now, it was ridiculous that you've got Roman Reigns coming out and you cut right to commercial. This is just dumb. Like, on SmackDown, they do the split screens for the commercials. Why couldn't we do a split screen here where it showed Roman Reigns walking out? And it was just awkward. Roman Reigns comes out, and then after about three or four minutes of commercial, you come back, and now they're staring face-to-face. And I know a lot of people hate Roman Reigns so much that no matter what happens in this particular case, they're always going to bury him every chance they get. They're always going to shit on him. They are always going to knock everything that he does. But I'm sorry. If you want to believe last week that John Cena got the better of him, then believe that. But that was ultimately because the WWE structured it that way. 15 years later, it is still all about Cena. And never, ever, ever get that mistaken. Don't think that the WWE let those guys go out there and just wing it. That was planned and packaged and put together that way to try and make your new top guy look like a fool. But this week, not so much. This week, I don't give a shit what anybody says. Roman got the better of Cena. When Cena tries to point out that Reigns' zipper was down, Roman appropriately said that it, he broke it because he's the big dog. And then called out Cena and questioned basically his sexuality for looking at his balls. And I'm like, you know what? At this point in time, no matter what other shit is done, Reigns wins this night. And some people are going to hate Reigns so much that they won't give him that credit. And part of the real reason that they hate Reigns is because they hate Cena that much and they see Roman as another Cena. Think about that. Roman isn't even hated just because of Roman alone. And you're not going to convince me that that's the case. They hate Roman in large part because they hate the fact that he's another Cena. That's how bad Cena sucks. And even this whole segment here, you know, when it comes to nut cutting time, Reigns is the one that challenges them to a fight, and Cena just stands there. And I find that appropriate after so many years of people talking about a heel turn. The fact is, Cena has been the number one villain on WWE programming for years, and this was another villainous thing. Talk all that shit until it's nut cutting time, and then you punk out like the bitch you are. Uh, the only thing that should have been trending out of this match, outside of Roman pooning Cena on the mic, was John Cena's bald spot. It's getting a little bigger. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Um, so moving on from that, uh, Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose, I give them this. I might not like them. And I think there are plenty of other hardcore fans that do not like them um, and like what they have become post-Shield. Uh, but they seem to be over with the live crowds. Now, is that due to them and them as a tag team? Or is this just more of a nostalgia pop and remembering the Shield? I don't really know. But for the moment... It works with them as the tag champs, and that's all good. 
the IC title match. Um, I really wish this was something that would have been saved for the pay-per-view because I think Jeff Hardy and Miz could go out there and have a really good match. And especially when you're a heel like The Miz, you want to work with somebody like a Jeff Hardy because he will go out of his way to make you look good. He will put his body out there, and he will get heat, and he will do all this crazy shit to try and take the match to another level. And to me, it almost seems like a damn shame that instead of spending weeks of building up to this and paying this off on the WWE Network at no mercy, that we got one week with very little buildup, and bam, Bob's your uncle, here you go. Like, to me, it feels like Miz and Jeff Hardy deserve more than this. Because you could have even tied in the uh, kicking off the SummerSlam kickoff show and how nobody was there, and they want to make sure that people are going to tune in on the network, and then you could put it right back on the pre-show to fuck with them. Um, but the match was okay. Uh, Miz winning is not necessarily disappointing. I just say, fuck it. If you don't care about half of these other damn titles and you hot potato them so much, why didn't you give Jeff Hardy the win here? It would have made people t stand up and take notice. It would have p potentially injected a little life into Jeff Hardy's character. But even as this match was going on, I found interesting that the whole thing I kept gravitating towards was the mindset of, I look at Matt Hardy, and I'm like, in terms of pure sentimental value, there is not a greater option to win the 2018 Royal Rumble, especially if you got the Broken Hardy shit working out, blah, blah, blah. There would be money to be made out of Matt Hardy getting a sentimental to run. Now, I know the WWE in their history has always been more about Jeff Hardy, and if anybody would get that type of run, he would. But at this point in time, I truly believe that over the past few years, Matt Hardy has been one of the best all-around performers in the business. You've been there before with Jeff Hardy. You've had him win your world title. Matt Hardy's never won your world title. It's one of these rare instances where it's like, opportunity is staring you right in the face and why in the hell wouldn't you potentially go for it it's just something i was thinking about pretty much during the entire match i don't know if that's a good thing or not but it was the thing my mind kept gravitating towards what it wasn't gravitating towards was a six-man cruiserweight tag and i find it really funny you got five guys who can actually do shit in the ring and they all sit there and basically look stupid as the one guy who can't do any of their shit in the ring is actually the one that's over. And again, people can say what they want about Enzo, and they can talk all this shit, but he moves merch. Clearly, he still gets a reaction, even with some of the hardcore fans knowing that he ruffles feathers backstage, even with them referencing it repeatedly on television and in promo segments, Enzo is still over. So maybe, maybe that's just a reminder of, you know, all the moves in the ring are nice and great, and it's great to have that. I don't dismiss that. But imagine how much more it means when you actually have some type of shtick, gimmick, personality, character that can really connect with the people. Those moves are not always going to connect with the people. There are very few guys that can connect with the people first and foremost based off of taking chances. Jeff Hardy was an example of somebody who connected with the fans on that level in that way. And, you know, it's a deep, meaningful connection still to this day. But Enzo's got something. And I looked at Cedric Alexander, and I'm like, God damn, man. In terms of cruiserweights, he should be a star, too. Like, you look at him. He's a photogenic dude. He clearly looks different than most of your roster. He can go. He's got some type of spark, some type of personality. Why in the bluest of blue fucks is this guy not already a star? It just defies logic to me. Again, if you are going to continue to insist on trotting out this division that you don't give a fuck about, that the only reason you put it out there was to sit there and have some filler for your three-hour show every Monday night, then why not do more with it? Cedric Alexander should be a star, and it's a goddamn shame that he's not. Speaking of guys, though, talking about stars, I'm going to tell you this much right now. Finn Balor fucking sucks, and you're not going to tell me any differently. And if you didn't tell me that he was a star and he's done all these great things with the Bullet Club and all his other bullshit. I'd take one look at him when he come out and think after the entrance that this dude was a fucking jobber. Like honestly, and I mean this, shame on those people that sit there and try to trot out there that Finn Balor is some great magnificent talent. Where? And when in the fuck is he going to ever show it? Don't give me that New Japan shit. Don't give me that this shit. Don't give me that blame WWE shit. At some point in time, maybe, just maybe, the dude's getting exposed on the WWE platform and he's not that fucking good. And who the fuck decides to give Finn Balor a live mic and expect him to talk? 
boring. Now, granted, it doesn't help when he's in a program with Bray Wyatt because if anything could make Finn Balor even more boring, it is going to be Bray Wyatt, who is now incredibly, absolutely, totally boring. Easily, to me, two of the most boring guys on the entire WWE roster, Raw or SmackDown, doesn't matter. Thank God I skipped this segment and took my... Uh, Balor Bowels bathroom break, however you want to call it. At least it was about halfway through Raw. It was well-timed by the WWE, and I appreciate that. So I won't bury the segment too much because they gave me the chance to go take a leak, take the dogs outside right in the middle of Raw. A nice refresher. Uh, the women's tag. I appreciated the concept of everybody in the match had something to fight for. Like Alexa and Sasha had a reason to work together because ultimately... The odds are much better if they fight one-on-one -on -one at No Mercy as opposed to having a four-way match. So they want to make sure that they win. On the flip side, Nia Jax and Emma. They want to make sure that they do well. They want to make sure that they don't hurt the other person or hurt the team's chances because they want a title shot. This is their chance at a title shot. I actually appreciated the fact that we had a sensible stipulation to the match. This team's got something to fight for. This team's also got something to fight for. In fact, the only thing that probably would have put this a little bit more over the top is you could have sat there and had something happen where Sasha or Alexa hates each other so damn much that they didn't care if the match at No Mercy became a four-way. They weren't going to work with that fucking bitch at all. It would have been the only other thing. But fuck Emma. God damn it. The only thing I care about right now is give Nia Jax that damn strap. That's all I'm asking for. You did the whole thing with... And that's what's so strikingly odd about all of this. You have her do the shit to Alexa. Just so that way you go right back into Sasha. But now you make this a four-way and you just shoehorn Emma in and it makes no fucking sense. None. I just... I, just, I don't get it. Whatever. But you've got a four-way now at No Mercy. whoop the fucking do Let's hope Nia goes over like it should be. But ultimately, this show was all going to build towards the, the main event. You know, you had the big 30-minute opening between Cena's match with Jordan and then his segment with Reigns. The other big thing on the night was going to be the steel cage match between Braun Strowman and Big Show. And they'd been building this up the whole night. And it kind of, granted, before this, seemed kind of randomly thrown together at the last minute. But I don't think it ultimately mattered. They did a really outstanding job of building it up through the course of the night. I thought both Braun and Big Show, even with their awkward staring high into the distance in their interviews backstage, were really on point with the message they were trying to deliver. Um, I loved how the WWE was trying to keep reminding this is what happened the last time these guys encountered each other kind of plants the seed of you don't know what the fuck is going to happen. I think everybody knew that something was going to come up where Big Show was going to get thrown through the steel cage. Now, most of us probably thought it was going to happen during the match, and that potentially would have been how he won, um, but that's not what happened. But it did still ultimately happen. The point being is this was a really, really damn good Raw main event match. And it's been striking to see how better how much better Braun Strowman has gotten over the past 12 months or so. Because he has. He clearly has. The light bulbs went off. It's really started to click with the big old Care Bear, if you will, Chase. But he's also benefited from working with some really good people like Roman Reigns and in this particular case, The Big Show. And while I know the WWE package had presented this, like this was a showcase for Braun Strowman, and this was a big-time spotlight piece for him ahead of his match against Brock Lesnar at No Mercy, and they're not wrong in that sense to me, and probably not only to me but others, I thought this was really a big show showcase as much as anything else. This was really a shining moment for him at the tail end of his career. I mean, you're talking about a guy in Big Show. That's been in the business for over two decades now. He's been with the company, WWE, for 18 plus years. And he's still able to go out there in a match on Raw and deliver a high caliber, high quality main event type of match. When he probably shouldn't have to, and he most certainly doesn't need to, but he does it, he can, and he chooses to. Like Big Show taking superplexes off of the top turnbuckle. Big Show doing big elbows off the top. This is not shit this dude has to do. 
It's not even shit he needs to do for himself. But because of the type of character that he's been over the years and the unselfishness that he's had for the company over the years and the team player that he's been over the years, he understands that a guy like Braun needed this spotlight, needed this showcase, and Big Show was going to be incumbent upon him like other people had helped him over the years that he was now going to need to help somebody else. And he did it in a massively big way. Like, you could have even done the whole thing where Braun threw Big Show through the side of the cage. And, you know, even with the way Big Show technically landed, both of his feet didn't land on the ground. Braun could have walked right over him and left the cage. But Big Show was willing to lay on his back and take the one, two, three, and then still afterwards get thrown through the cage by Braun. And it's been a real shame to me in recent years to see what's happened with the Big Show, to see kind of the indifference towards him, some of the flat-out vile and hatred towards this guy. Big Show sucks, please retire, and all of that. Because, let me tell you, the simple fact is, is this is the best giant in the history of the business. I mean, no offense to Andre, he was a massive money draw. But in terms of a pure talent, and what he's been able to do for the sustained run that he has, there's nobody in the history of this business that is better than the Big Show. Period. And we all know it's true, even if you're not down with Big Show and you haven't liked the character over the years. And he's been hurt by the WWE over featuring this giant over the years and always flipping him between heel and babyface. But again, he's always been willing to do that. When the WWE calls and asks him to do something, he answers the bell time after time after time. But this is a guy that's had a lot of big matches over the years, a lot of big moments over the years, and he's helped a lot of people out over the years. It just breaks my heart at the tail end of his career that in general, Big Show gets the type of reaction that he does and the indifference towards him that he does from the fan base. Because to me, he is a legend. And he deserves to be treated as such. And if you didn't understand that before, I sure to God hope that you understood after this steel cage match, after this main event, and the show that they put out there. And again, it's not always about just flips and kicks. That makes shit work. You know, when he did something, it mattered. It had purpose and significance. And it helps Braun get over even more. And honestly, like I said, Big Show benefited too. And I heard that the crowd gave him a nice ovation afterwards. And he deserved it. And frankly, he deserves a lot of your respect too. Because I know ultimately, even with some of the frustration over his character in recent years, Big Show has always had... And will continue to always have my respect for just how much he has contributed to the WWE and how much better the business has been because of his involvement in it.